Before we get to the wave magnet antenna in this video, let's go ahead and clean up this uh, volume control rod here and this pulley for the dial string, which you'll recall slides over the volume control shaft, goes down inside, and this little key right here goes on the other side of the chassis to hold it in. And the, the string will go around here a couple of times, it'll come back up through this hole, and it'll go around here, and, and then uh, there's a entrance point right here, a hole where the string will go in, and there'll be a spring hooked to this little hook right here, and you know, so on and so forth. Standard uh, dial string hookup with a spring. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and clean it up, and the way I'm going to do it, you don't need very strong cleaners and all that stuff, just some good old fashioned rubbing alcohol. I, I usually buy two bottles of this at a time. Cheap stuff, get it at the dollar store or something, lasts me forever. And uh, I'm going to use acid brushes. For those of you who've never seen an acid brush, this is an acid brush. Some people call them flux brushes, but uh, they're actually acid brushes. You can get them at Lowe's for 10 cents a piece over in the soldering department. And people use them to smear flux on different things when they use a, a large torch or a heavy, heavy soldering iron. And they come with long bristles, just like this. And you can whack them off at any length that you want, and it makes them stiffer. I usually keep one around that's got the, the full length, but you know, where I can get down in, way down in here sometimes. It's a lot easier to get down in there with longer bristles than it is these little short jobbies. Uh, I even have one at the house where I've cut off the bristles even shorter than this. So they're real good scrubber. They're nice and stiff. The stiffer they get, the better they work. And uh, I just wanted to show you those. So what we're going to do is just go ahead and dip the old brush in the alcohol. Standard old operation. Much of this stuff you see on here is just hardened up old nasty grease. I'm just going to go ahead and clean it as best I can. Give it a clean, clean, clean. Just scrub it real good, top and bottom. And then uh, try to get off as much of that old grease as I can. And uh, if it gets really hard to get off, I've got myself a brass bristle brush here. Don't use wire on there. Use a brass bristle brush if, it, if it's to loosen it up. A couple of strokes and that will get it. Eventually, if you keep working on it, you get it nice and clean. <clears throat> I'll be cleaning the back of this also. As you can see, it's kind of bent, so I'll kind of have to kind of straighten it up. And we'll clean up the key. And we'll definitely clean up this brass uh, rod. Now, this brass rod will probably require a little work over. I've got some very fine uh, 800 grit sandpaper here and some 600. Or actually, this is the 800. This is the 600 grit paper. We'll shine that thing up really nice, clean it real good with the alcohol, and then just curl this stuff around there and, and, and uh, with the end sticking out and just spin it left and right just like that. One hand holds the, uh, the paper and the other hand spins the rod. I went ahead and uh, removed the two screws to make things a little bit easier and I was able to push back the volume control shaft just enough where I can get up in there with my my uh, cleaning brush and, and kind of get it nice and clean. Now that I've got the brass rod all shined up and looking real good, I got the grease all out of the center of it. Looks really good. The problem we're going to have though, I can already see it. You have to think ahead in these radios. This part here where the dial string will ride, this is the pulley. It will be very very shiny and very very slippery and uh, it'll cause the dial spring, uh, I'm sorry, the dial string to slip and uh, we don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my knife and gently scratch across it all the way around like so cause a roughened surface. I'm not going to dig it real deep but I am going to scratch it all the way around which gives the dial string a surface to be gripped. I'm just going to take a little bit of grease. I got a little grease in this container here. Any old grease will do the job, you know, just kind of smear it around a little bit. You don't have to go crazy with it. Just kind of stick it on there. Put a couple of blobs so when the uh, 
brass rod fits on there it'll kind of push it down all the way kind of spin the rod as you put it on move it back and forth and like that and then we go ahead and get it all the way in there well that's it it's all back in looking real good and uh, I'm ready to look at that wave magnet and antenna let's do it I've tipped the radio cabinet on its face this is the bottom of the cabinet here, the four legs. It'll make it easier for me to get this wave magnet antenna box, which is exactly what it is. The antenna is located inside this cardboard box. And uh, there are a bunch of wires coming out of the top up here. And it's mount the top is mounted with a spring in this wooden block you see right here. And the bottom is mounted to this bracket. So what I'm going to do is remove this screw right here and then the bracket will come off the bottom of the box and I should be able to remove it plus any associated wiring alright let's get this screw out of here notice that the screw goes all the way through this wood and this wood's about an inch thick so they didn't want that wave magnet antenna to fall out of there Okay, there's the spring I told you about. It's it's mounted in a looks like a, a metal bracket. It doesn't come off, which is good, so I don't have to worry about losing it too much. And there's a few wires coming out of it, and I'll have to clear them from the hole going up through the cabinet over in this area. So I'll have to work. Oh, here we go. She's coming loose already. All right. I don't know what's going on here. Let me study this a little bit, and I'll get back with you. Okay, well, what we have here is a, is a hanging wire, <clears throat> and, and we've got two basic antennas. We have, this is a loop antenna located inside the box, and this is an in-cabinet single-wire antenna, primarily used for shortwave. This loop antenna will take care of your broadcast band. So, this wire has broken. It went down around the bottom of the cabinet, and it hooked over here to where this piece of broken wire is. I don't know if you can see that or not. But. So what we're going to do is uncoil this and we should be able to lift the entire mechanism right out of the radio. So let's go ahead and unwind this thing. All they were was nails driven into the wood. And we'll pull the rest of this. This has a little plug. A little four prong plug. Too close together. Too far apart. Or further apart I guess. <clears throat> now that should do it. I should be able to lift this entire wave magnet antenna out. Sure enough, out she comes. Well, let's go outside and take a look at it. Here we can see where those wires go into a hole in the back side of that box, uh, the part we couldn't see earlier. Uh, the connector again, and of course the external antenna, or the in-cabinet antenna, I guess is what it was called. And we'll flip it back over to the front side where we were looking at it before. These connections right here are for external antenna, you can, uh, which would lengthen uh, this shortwave antenna. You could run it out to a tree, and this is where you would hook it. Getting the cardboard loose from these uh, brackets, you got to be real careful. There's uh, half moon uh, extensions on the cardboard that slide underneath the bracket. So I had to reach my hand in and be real careful and try to force it up a little bit with my finger until it came loose. Otherwise it would have torn all the pieces. And, you know, you don't, want to, you don't want to be tearing these things up that, if you can help it. Well here it is folks. It is uh, two pieces of masonite. This is one side and another side over here separated by wooden dowels. And then they wrapped wire around and around and around the wooden dowels to form a loop antenna. You'll notice that our single wire in-cabinet antenna is wrapped around and around this thing on the outside. We have the loop antenna here, but the long wire antenna is wrapped around and around. So what we're, from what I can make out here, it appears to be this is nothing more than a transformer. Uh, these wires are wrapped around and around the outside and it, let's say it goes out to a tree in your yard. 
the signal comes down the wire from the tree it comes down uh, this thin wire into the uh, into the uh, radio cabinet or the signal just from this wire alone inside the radio cabinet and it's magnetically coupled to the loop antenna so we essentially have a primary here which would be a one two three four five six seven eight nine ten it looks like a ten turn primary and of course the secondary of this magnetically coupled transformer would be the loop antenna I don't know somebody can correct me if I'm wrong but it certainly looks that way to me it's just a magnetically it, there's, there's no physical connection between the two it's magnetically coupled and picked up by the secondary and fed on into the circuitry of the radio well, I think that's pretty cool so what I'm going to do is clean this up glue all those loose wires and see what I can do about this cardboard box I, I really don't want to just glue it all back together if anything ever happens to the transformer they'd have to tear the box apart to get to it or I, I say this antenna is what I should say this loop antenna and the uh, outside they would have to tear the box all the pieces to get to it it's already in pretty bad shape as you can see it's been wet over the years stained up I don't know what I'm gonna do about that I have to think about that I may glue part of it but not all of it after I got the cardboard uh, spread apart and got it open I found out there was a lot of little tears along the edges like this one right here I'll have to repair that the cardboard was very brittle uh, up here in this up here in this corner this little piece just broke right off it just crumbles into little pieces it just this call it comes apart I just bumped it with my hand and it fell right apart so very brittle not extremely brittle but very brittle this here will have to be repaired I've been putting some uh, duct tape on the inside to give it added strength when the box is finally put together you won't see that uh, right now I've got a I'm going to take this tissue and just wipe, all I'm going to do is wipe it down. I'm not going to add any water, no cleaner. Just take some tissue and wipe it down. Get all the dust wiped out of it that I can. It's pretty dusty down at the bottom. Never been cleaned, never been opened. So once I get it all done, I'll uh, come back and show you how we're going to fold this box over. Put some glue along here and then close it up to where it uh, will overlap right there. And as you can see, the seam is very wavy. It's complicated. It would be tough to get that thing to go down. How do, how do you get that to go down and then get the flap to come up and, and to where it would glue right? You, you know, it'd have to glue nice and flat all along that edge and eliminate those waves. So I sat down and I, I thought about it, and this is what I came up with. If everything works out as planned, I'll be using these two clamps and these two boards. <clears throat> now I know, and uh, these two uh, pieces of plastic I have left over. I've already fastened two pieces of plastic to the thin board. Uh, I had both these boards in my desk drawer. I didn't cut them. They were already there. And I said, hmm, I think they're going to work. So what I did was I fastened uh, this plastic. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's for making patterns uh, for knitting or darning or something. I, got, <laughs> I bought it a long time ago at, at Hobby Lobby. Anyway, I put the plastic on the board because I'm going to be having the gluing surface I'll be pressing this against the back of the gluing surface of the cardboard and if any glue was to seep out I didn't want it to get on the wood because it would be it would just glue the cardboard to the wood however with a plastic surface it won't do that so I have two more here I'm gonna stick that baby right there I'm gonna stick that baby right there and I'm gonna tape those on as well and then I'll show you what we're gonna do First thing I'm going to do is put a little spot of super glue right here on this corner. Not much, just a little bit. And I'm going to close this box over like that. And try to get a good, it's hard to do with one hand trying to do hold the camera with the other. I just want to get the corner set in there like that. And I'll hold that for a few seconds and 
we'll go on to the next step. Alright, here's the game plan for repairing this thing. Uh, I've already got the super glue holding the corner together and that enabled me to go ahead and close the box. And that, you know, gives me a little structure there for what I'm about to do. Uh, I'm going to lift this up and take a little bit of this here uh, Elmer's glue. We're going to pour a little bit of it along the seam between the two pieces of cardboard. Probably going to pour it up to about, oh, let me see, from the corner up to that board right there, maybe up to about right in here somewhere. Not a whole lot of glue is going to go between those two pieces of cardboard. This one, with the plastic side facing upward, will go underneath like so, and it will press up from the bottom. This will press up this flap right here. Uh, from the bottom. This one will press down from the top. And the way that's going to be done is with two clamps. One will go between, will go down in this hole right here like so. Let me get this thing a little wider. Alright, it'll go down in this hole like so and clamp over in the corner as far as it'll reach at an angle like that. And the other one will go from the end of the box inward and clamp down. And that will give me my wood on the bottom, wood on the top, the two clamps holding it. And if we get lucky, it will work. Alright, I used my pocket knife to uh, spread the glue. I, sp I put the glue up to this point right here, which is, oh, I don't know, about four inches from the end. And the glue is all the way down. Now let's get the boards in and get the clamps on. Well there it is, this clamp at an angle holding the board here, this one coming in from the end. And we look up inside, If I don't know if we can even see up inside, but you can see the clamp at the far end down there holding the inside and uh, this clamp holding the inside here. I don't know if this is going to work, but it's worth a try. This box is very, very flimsy. Yeah, it's been a couple of hours now. I left it out in the old sun to dry with the clamps on it and everything. And this is all looking pretty straight now. Now all I have to do is move my clamps and my wood and get the last part clamped down. This end of the poor old box is just is the worst of the two. So what I'm going to do, every time I touch it, another piece begins to flake off. And you can see it over here. It's any bending at all, it just begins to crack and separate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to completely glue this uh, end shut. And the wave magnet antenna will be placed in from this end, which is in a whole lot better condition. Still not the greatest in the world, but in a lot better condition. To help keep this, uh, the surfaces box from flaking, uh, continually flaking, which every time we touch it another piece flakes off over here, it's just, it's just, it's just really coming apart. Uh, I've decided to go ahead and spray it with some what they call uh, acrylic uh, Valspar and uh, it's a satin finish and I don't know how it's going to work today as you can hear in the background probably a little bit of thunder and uh, it is raining so what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray a paper bag first this one right here which is basically the same surface as this box only a lot newer <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and give it a spray and let it sit for Oh, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes and see if it uh, turns milky color or something. I don't want to spray anything on here that I'm going to be sorry for later. So let's try it on this first. Okay, it didn't turn milky or a weird color or anything. I think that stuff's going to work. And I know this has been a long video, but I wanted to cover all of this stuff in one fell swoop because next time, if all goes well, we'll hook up this uh, wave magnet antenna to the radio chassis. We'll plug the chassis in and take the speaker out of the cabinet and get all that stuff on my bench and try to fire it up, see if we can get any noise out of it. Until next time, this is John. I'll be back.